this video, we're going to do some normal strain and shear strain calculation examples. We're going to learn how to use this normal strain equation, which is a change in length with respect to the original length. Another way to look at it is it's a deformation associated with normal stress. And then we're going to also do some examples with the shear strain equation. This pi over 2 minus theta prime, this equation is provided in radians. And the way that this equation works is that it's kind of the change in angle relative to a right angle. You can also write this in terms of degrees, which would be 90 degrees minus theta prime. And the shear strain is a deformation due to shear stress. Okay, so let's look at an example. What I have here is I'm given this initial geometry, unloaded A, B, C, D. This could be like a, a rectangle drawn on like a ball before it's loaded. And then I apply loading to the structure, and then it deforms into this dotted line shape here that you see. And this is my deformed shape after all manner of loading is applied to the structure. I want to find the normal strain in line AC, the normal strain in line BD, the shear strain at A, and the shear strain at D. All right, let's start by calculating the normal strain in line AC. AC was originally this length right here. And then after the loading and deformation, it turned into this length over here from here to here. And to calculate this normal strain, we just need a change in length divided by the original length. And we call the change in length the final length of AC minus the original length of AC divided by the original length of AC. Looking at this right here, I see a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And so the original length of AC here is 500 millimeters. And now I just need the final length of AC. Focus on this drawing, the deformed shape on the right. I can look at this larger triangle here. And I can see that this point, point C, moved up 11 millimeters. From the bottom here, it'd be 300 plus 11. So this is 311 millimeters. And I see that point C moved 9 meters to the right. And so from point A, that would be 400 plus 9. So this is 409 millimeters. And then from Pythagorean theorem, and this is 513.81 millimeters. And when I do this calculation, my normal strain will be 13.81 millimeters divided by 500. And this will tell me that epsilon AC is 0.0276 millimeters per millimeter. And that positive result means that, you know, I've elongated or have tensile strain. Okay, let's do another normal strain calculation. This time, let's look at BD. And BD originally is this length. And because of the 3, 4, 5 triangle, it's also 500 millimeters. And the final length of BD this time is from this corner to this corner. That's the deformed length. So we know the original length of BD is 500 millimeters from that 3, 4, 5 triangle. And we've got to do some geometry calculations to figure out what the final length of BD is. I'm going to use this right triangle here. Looking at the drawing from point A to the end here, this length right here, this is 403 millimeters. I know that this line right here is 5 millimeters. So that means this bottom leg of the triangle is 398 millimeters. And then I can do the same thing for that vertical leg. I know that from the bottom here to the top, this is 304 millimeters. And then from here to here, this is 4 millimeters. So this is just 300 millimeters like that. And so then I can just use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the final length of BD. Let's do it. And I get 498.4 millimeters. And I'm going to plug that plug and chug into my strain equation. And I end up with negative 0 0.0032 millimeters per millimeters. The negative indicates that there's a contraction or shortening, and it's a so it would be associated with a compressive normal stress. All right, so hopefully that gives you a sense of how to apply the normal strain equation. Let's go ahead and look at some angle changes or shear strain at various corners. Okay, let's start with the shear strain at A. So A is originally 90. The new angle, dotted line to dotted line here, is 
theta prime. And the shear strain at A in degrees would be 90 degrees minus theta A prime. In order for me to find theta A prime, I really need to know this angle, which I'll call alpha 1, this angle, which I'll call alpha 2. And to find alpha 1, you know, I just want to look for that right triangle that makes sense here. And just from looking at that triangle, I can see that the vertical leg is 304 millimeters. The horizontal leg is 5 millimeters. So from inverse tangent, I get alpha 1 is tan inverse of 5 over 304. And this tells me alpha 1 is 0.942 degrees. And then I can do the same thing with alpha 2. And alpha 2 would be the inverse tangent of 4 over 403, which is 0.569 degrees. And looking at the drawing here, I see that theta A prime is 90 minus alpha 1 minus alpha 2, which is 88.489 degrees. And if I take this angle and, pu and pu plug it into my definition of the shear strain, my shear strain gamma A is 1.511 degrees. I can convert this into radians, just multiply by pi over 180, and this would be 0 0.0264 radians. Because this angle closed from 90 degrees, it is actually a positive shear strain. If it opened up greater than 90 degrees, it would be a negative shear strain. You'll notice that the shear strain is actually just the sum of alpha 1 plus alpha 2. You know, if I had symbolically plugged in gamma A, 90 degrees, minus theta A prime, minus 90, minus alpha 1, minus alpha 2. This would have just been alpha 1 plus alpha 2. All right, let's do another calculation. Let's this time look at the shear strain at corner D. I want to draw a right angle relative to the, the current angle or the deformed angle. And the new angle theta D prime is from dotted line to dotted line. We see that the angle is opening up from its 90 degrees. In order to find theta D prime, we need this angle here and this angle here. And looking at this first angle right here, we notice that from our previous example, well, we have two parallel lines. I'll draw this right triangle first. Boom, right here. And this line and this line are parallel. So, hey, we found alpha one before. So this one right here is also alpha one. We have two parallel lines and an intersecting line. So that's also alpha one. I can draw the tr right triangle for the next angle. I'll call this like alpha three. And to figure out the legs of my right triangle, I know that the distance from here to here is 409 millimeters and then I have to subtract out five this dimension right here that's the five millimeters and that makes this leg this horizontal leg 404 millimeters and then the vertical would be let's see it went up 11 from corner C if you will and then this height right here is four millimeters because of this number right there and that would make the vertical leg height here, seven millimeters. And so alpha three is equal to tan inverse of seven over 404, which is equal to 0.993 degrees. We knew alpha one is 0.942 degrees. And to calculate theta D prime, well, the angle opened up. So this would be 90 plus alpha one plus alpha three, which is 91.935 degrees. And then using the definition of the shear strain, gamma is 90 minus theta D prime. And I get that gamma D is negative 1.935 degrees. The negative indicates that the, the final angle opened up from 90 degrees. And I could convert this into radians as well by multiplying by pi over 180, negative 0.0038 radians. And and I, I'm sure some of you noticed that, hey, I could have also calculated gamma D is the same as negative alpha 1 plus alpha 3. And the negative sign is because we know that the angle is opening up. All right. Hope you enjoyed the review of the normal strain and the shear strain equations. Take it easy. Structure free.